it's mentioned in the gospel of john chapter number 14 verse number 16 jesus christ peace be upon him says i shall ask my father to send you a comforter who shall abide with you forever jesus peace be upon him repeats the message in the gospel of john chapter number 15 verse number 26 where he says and when the comforter will come who i will ask my father to send he will testify me it's further mentioned in the gospel of john chapter number 16 verse number 7 jesus christ peace be upon him says it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter shall not come for if i depart shall i send him I just want to I just want to say I cannot believe he quoted that verse is that not the last verse in this entire passage because the Muslims are drawing the supposed prophecy about Muhammad from John chapter 14 through John chapter 16 chapter 16 verse 7 is the last verse you Muslims would ever in a million years want to quote if you're trying to show that this comforter is talking about Muhammad we'll get to that in just a moment uh, but let's consider the claim in general. Let me go ahead and read uh, chapter 14, verse 16, and uh, I'll go ahead and read 16 to 17. Jesus says, I will ask the Father, so God is the Father, right? Yep. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, helper, a comforter, that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth. So Jesus, in the verse, identifies the comforter as the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him but you know him because he abides with you Jesus followers the people he's talking to and will be in you so just some very basic problems here already I will ask the father is, God, is Allah the father according to Islam definitely not nope. they don't refer to God as father actually uh, not only don't refer to him as father, if you go to chapter 9, verse 30 of the Quran, it says that the Jews claim that Ezra is the son of Allah, and the Christians claim that Jesus, the Messiah, is the son of Allah. And this is a saying of their mouths, and so they imitate the disbelievers of old, of old, and Allah will fight them for it. Notice, Allah will actually fight, subjugate, humiliate, if not kill, Jews and Christians for claiming that God has a son, specifically in the case of Christians for claiming that Jesus is the Son of God because according to chapter 19 of the Quran and I want people who are listening to write these down and read them on their own leisure um, chapter 19 verses 88 to 93 there it says that the highest relationship a person can have with Allah is a slave to master relationship because the very notion of Allah having a son is the height of blasphemy it is so blasphemous that the entire creation itself shudders with fear at the notion right that Allah could have a son. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's, let's right? keep reading this passage here. I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. Who's he talking to here? I saw to the disciples. Okay, so he will be with you forever. So if, if this is talking about Muhammad, Muhammad was with Jesus' disciples forever, right? Well, but they'll tell you, no, it means his teachings. What, is that what it says? No, it says he himself okay. will abide with you. And, and keep in mind, he's actually trying to comfort them, right? That's why we're talking about the comforter here. They're sad because they hear Jesus is leaving. Don't worry. God's going to give you another one. He's going to comfort you, and he's going to be with you forever. That's exactly what he says in 14, uh, verse 18. He says, I will not leave you as orphans, but I will mm -hmm. come to you. Mm -hmm. He says it right there. Yeah. So don't worry about it. You won't be orphaned. Mm -hmm. The Spirit will come, and the Spirit will then mediate my presence to you, and I'll be with you mm -hmm. through the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Exactly. All right. That is the Spirit of truth. Is Muhammad the Spirit of truth? If you're asking Zechariah, of course. He, Muhammad is the spirit of truth. Yes. So, Interesting, that's a title of Angel Gabriel in Islamic theology. Okay, so called, Muhammad yeah. is the Angel Gabriel. Exactly, according, according to Muhammad. To, according Nike, to yeah. Zechariah. So Zechariah, keep in mind, has just proven that Muhammad is the Angel Gabriel. <laughs> All right? Yeah. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not see him or know him. So the world did not see Muhammad. Well, they couldn't because he's the angel Gabriel, right? And exactly. there's obviously so, yeah. some kind of spirit. So the world did not see Muhammad because he is the angel Gabriel. 
but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. Again, who's he talking to here? He's talking to the disciples. So what does he say there? That the, the spirit is already with them mm -hmm. and will be in all of them. So Muhammad, the who is the angel Gabriel, is already with Jesus followers and is going to be in and them. Indwell them. For what and purpose? So they can to empower them. Yes. So they can be comforted by them. And empower them for mission. So basically what we're getting at is, according to Zechariah, not only is Muhammad the angel Gabriel, but Muhammad actually has the essential attributes of deity. He's divine. Why do I say that? Because, again, David, uh, maybe you can help me understand this. In order for this entity to indwell a group of individuals at the same time and be with them wherever they go, in order to comfort them and empower them to accomplish the mission that Christ has entrusted to them, what kind of attributes must this entity have to be in all of these individuals at the same time, wherever they go, to empower and comfort them, guaranteeing the success of their mission. So Muhammad's not just the angel Gabriel, he's God. Because that he presupposes attributes, right? that he's om omniscient, he's om omnipresent, and omnipotent. So Zakir Naik has just proven that Muhammad is Allah in this passage, right? Exactly. If, if, if Muhammad is the one who's going to fulfill this passage. Exactly, right? because he has to be omnipresent, mm -hmm. omniscient, omnipotent, to indwell all of them at the same time, to empower them and comfort them and be with them wherever they go. Therefore, the conclusion is, that Muhammad is angel Gabriel, and angel Gabriel is God. That's a conclusion. And that's what we have so far. Any more points we want to, I mean, there, there's, there's a ton of stuff in this. Oh, yeah, passage. there's a lot more, in fact. Because, before, before, yeah. we, before we get to, 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 the, yeah, it's, to, it's to the most devastating one, where we go ahead and grant, yeah. for argument's sake, what Zakir Naik is saying. Yeah. Anything else we want to point out about various ways that Muslims should not be applying this? to? Oh, to, uh, definitely. To the, the, the one way, uh, well, again, this is going to be the whammy. Uh, but real quickly, let me just explain, for those Christians who want to know, mm -hmm. real quickly, because we're going to show you the whammy, where Zakir Naik's, not, and Zakir Naik's argument not only leads to the conclusion that Muhammad is the angel Gabriel, who is God, but that the Father and the Son together happen to be Allah, the God of Muhammad. The greater I, God. Yeah, before I get to that, I just want to make sure what Jesus meant that he had to go away for the Spirit to come. Because mm -hmm. many Christians do stumble on that point. Jesus already told us in John 14, 17, the Comforter was there with the disciples. The difference is that Jesus has to go for the Comforter, the Spirit, to indwell them. As long as he was on earth, the Comforter was present with them in the person of Christ. But Christ had to go in order for the Spirit to now indwell them and empower them the way he did when Christ was on earth. In fact, this is clearly stated in the same Gospel of John, John 1, 32 to 33, John chapter 1, verses 32 to 33, and John 7, 38 to 39. John 7, 38 to 39, basically confirm that at Jesus' baptism, the Spirit came down upon Christ in the form of, of a dove and remained on him and would remain on him until he was glorified. And until that moment, the Spirit would not be given to anyone else. John clearly says that in John 7:39. The Spirit would be given later, but would not be given up to that time until Christ was glorified. So that's what Jesus means. The Spirit is with you. The Comforter is with you. He's present with you in the person of Christ. But Christ must be glorified, must go away for the Spirit to now indwell them. So he wasn't denying that the Comforter was there. He was simply saying, he will not indwell you until I finish my work that the Father sent me to do. So that's his meaning. I just want to make sure, lest Christians stumble... When a Muslim raises that objection, well, the Holy Spirit was already present, but the Comforter wasn't. That's not what Jesus said. Mm -hmm. The Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, was present. But Jesus' point is he has to go for the Comforter to indwell them. So now that we got that point so, out so of the, the way. the Spirit is going to come in a special way that precisely. he was not present before. And don't we see the, the Holy exactly. Spirit descending in a very special and unique way after after this happens, exactly. Especially after the book this of Acts, glorification, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, in other words, if you just keep reading, this is this is the this is this is the book of John. If you just keep reading the very next book, the book of Acts, it says what happened after all of this. Yeah. Holy Spirit comes down on Jesus' followers and uh, empowers them, does all kinds of things. Very clear. There's nothing confusing about this from a Christian perspective. The confusion yeah. comes when a Muslim comes along, tries to rip a verse totally out of context. And uh, I, I have to say here, Sam. Um, is it a good idea to be playing around with passages about the Holy Spirit and start uh, applying them to people like Muhammad? Definitely not. The Lord Jesus Christ warns us, and you can find this warning. Matthew chapter 12, verses 31 to 32. Matthew 12, 31 to 32. And Mark 3, 28 to 30. Mark 3, 28 to 30. The Lord Jesus Christ quite clearly says, All sins, all blasphemies, even sins and blasphemies against the Lord Jesus Christ shall be forgiven. But the one sin, the one blasphemy that shall never be forgiven, 
makes someone guilty of an eternal sin and therefore eternal condemnation is the blaspheming of the Holy Spirit of God. So this would be somewhere, somewhere in the same ballpark, not the exact same thing as shirk in yes. Islam, right? Yes, as, exactly. as far as you Muslims, you're trying to think, what's the worst thing you could do? This is the worst thing you could do, according, not yes. according to Sam or David, according to Jesus. The worst thing you can do is start playing around uh, with claims about the Holy Spirit. Exactly. And that's exactly what Zakir Naik does. And so Zakir Naik, according to Jesus, is one of the worst blasphemers exactly. you, could, uh, you could imagine. Okay. And, and now, why would we say it's blasphemous? Imagine, you are saying the Holy Spirit is Muhammad. And again, not to be unnecessarily offensive, Muhammad's life is anything but a beacon of moral virtue. Mm -hmm. To say that that one is the Holy Spirit is a great insult, mm -hmm. attack, assault, blasphemy against mm -hmm. the pure, holy spirit of the living God. And in, uh, in uh, Surah 5, Christians are condemned for saying Allah is Jesus. Jesus yeah. yeah, son of Mary, right? Yeah. And here Muslims are saying the Holy Spirit is <laughs> Muhammad. Yeah. What, 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 you, guys, yeah. you guys have some issues. Yeah. But let's go ahead and get to... The ultimate destruction. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Muslims want to claim this. You want to claim this is Muhammad, that the comforter is Muhammad. Yeah. We say we'll go ahead and give you that for argument's sake because you just proved that Muhammad is a false prophet. Mm -hmm. right? yes. So and this is why we pointed out a moment ago the verse that I can't believe Zakir Naik even read. You, you Muslims should avoid this, avoid this verse in this passage. But let's read it again. This is. John chapter 16, same passage. John chapter 16, verse 7. Jesus talking. But I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will I send you. him to you. Exactly. Zachary Knight quoted that. He quoted it well. Exactly. He quoted Jesus saying, I'm going away. And I'm going to, I'm the one who's going to send the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, whom Zakir Naik is claiming is yes, Muhammad. definitely. So, according to Islam, Sam, who sends Muhammad? Okay. In Islam, we are told, and you can show, show this from the Quran, Allah sent Muhammad in the name of Allah, and the authority of Allah, to glorify Allah. Allah sent Muhammad in Allah's name, in the name of Allah, with Allah's authority to glorify Allah. You just read a passage that says that the Lord Jesus Christ sends the Comforter. Not only that, if you go to John 14, 26, this is what, same, same mm -hmm. promise. John 14, 26, it says, but the Helper or Comforter, the Holy Spirit. See here, John 14, 26, he's clearly said to be the Holy Spirit. But be that as it may, for argument's sake, let's say it's Muhammad. God forbid such uh, blasphemy. Whom the Father will send in my name. So now notice, it's the Father and the Son together that send the Comforter in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And then John 15, 26. But when the Helper comes, this is John 15, 26. When the Helper, Counselor comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth, who proceeds from the Father, he'll bear witness about me. So now notice, Father and Son together send the Comforter from the presence of the Father himself who's in heaven. From the presence of the Father himself in heaven. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to glorify Jesus Christ. Now how do I know glorify Christ? Because John 16, 14, he says, he will glorify me. Okay? So notice, the comforter sent by the Father and the Son in the name of Jesus to glorify Jesus. But wait, Muhammad is the comforter. But Muhammad was sent by Allah in the name of Allah to glorify Allah. Okay, so now let's connect the dots. Comforter is Muhammad. Father and Son send the comforter. Allah sends Muhammad. Conclusion is, Father and Son are Allah, the God of Muhammad. And there's no way around this, right? You can't because you can't. The so 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 keep in mind, right? You have Muhammad, right? You Muslims, you Muslims believe here's Muhammad. He's sent by Allah, right? So here's Allah. Allah's in heaven. He sends Muhammad. You Muhammad, go go preach. So there's Allah and there's Muhammad. <laughs> but wait a minute. According to the Gospel of John, you have the Comforter who's sent by Father and Son. Father and Son send the Comforter. Now, no problem so far, but now you Muslims, instead of saying, oh, that's just corruption, that's nonsense, you want to say, Muhammad is the comforter. Well, if Muhammad is the comforter, Muhammad is sent by Allah, comforter is sent by Allah, I mean, by, by the father and son, then father and son, according to Zakir Naik, right. is, the God of Muhammad, Allah, yeah. is the God of Muhammad. And that actually, you know what also proves? It proves the Quran has been corrupted. Why? 
Because in the Quran it says Allah is a father to no one and Jesus mm -hmm. is not the son. Mm -hmm. However, if Muhammad is the comforter, the last thing he would deny is that the father and son are God. Mm -hmm. No way the historical Muhammad could have said Allah is not the father and Jesus is not his son if he's the comforter. Because the comforter surely knows it's the father and son who sent him. Mm -hmm. So Zakarnayak has proved that after Muhammad died, Muslims came and corrupted the Quran to omit every single reference to Allah being the father and son. Shame on you Muslims for perverting the message of the Quran.